Google, like uh, Mozilla, like Intel, like uh, Opera, and many others. So uh, it, it just started this year, and it's it's called Progressive Web Apps. Um, so those are my those are some of the social handles. If you're gonna tweet or say anything on social media, you can use those handles. Right, uh, over 400 million, over 400 million, that's the uh, number of mobile subscribers in Africa as of 2015, over 400 million. Wow, clearly mobile is the money. Right, and uh, it's being, predict it's being predicted that there's going to be a 51% growth between 2014 and 2020. And 75% of the purchases in that 51% growth are going to be smartphones. Uh, so it's going to be, it's again, uh, between 2014 and 2020. Now, 80% of the users that have been using GSM or Edge are going to be cut, are expected to cut, to be to get cut in half by 2020 due to upgrades to 3G or WCDMA. And the rest of the world will be in 4G. I think many of us are already in 4G. And uh, looking at uh, the, 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 the speed of a 2G network or 3, 3G, it ranges between 40 kilobytes per second uh, to 50 kilobytes per second. Now, uh, as you've said that 75% of the upgrades of the people that are buying cell phones are going to be buying smartphones. I think when you think about a smartphone, well, I'm, 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 I'm a Google developer, so I always think Android first. <laughs> Before I think anyone else, I know many, of, some of you might, might differ with me, but when I think uh, mobile, I think Android. So, uh, the question comes now, well, on that Android, why not web? So, uh, this was a discussion I, was, I had with my girlfriend on our first date. So I was telling her that, you know, installing things has gotten so fast and painless. But why not skip it entirely and make a phone that has every app installed already and just downloads and it runs it on the fly? Well, I felt so clever until I realized I invented web apps, web pages. Right. So, uh, speaking of web apps, uh, so, our uh, web apps, apps. Well, many of people might not say they are apps because when people think of apps, they think of native apps, right? They think of you know those uh, apps that don't or that don't that don't open via a browser or those apps that you know do several other stuff. So most of us will say nah, web apps are not apps. And uh, everybody, I think, would say I would create a native app rather than, you know, getting to creating a, a web app. Or probably use Monsieur JS or PhoneGap, you know, just to get a hybrid application that runs on uh, Android, Windows, and iOS. Uh, so, but people, I think, what we want to know is what makes an app an app? You know, what is an app? Is it uh, that the network is always, uh, okay, the network is always unpredictable. So people will say, I want a fast app. The web is not that fast, is it? Well, many will say it's not. There's no network, I want my app to work offline, for real. Well. The web can't do that. Who knows? I want my app to have push notifications. Can the web do that? I want my app to be installed. Can the web do that? 
So the, the answer is always the web can't do that. The web can't do that to all of these things. So people would say, no, I can't. I don't want an app. I want people to use. Uh, I don't want a, a web app. Uh, I just want people to use, you know, a native app. But then, good news, the web can do that. And even better. So, uh, it's called progressive web apps. So, we have got, uh, it uses what we call the app show model, where we have your HTML and CSS basically uh, forming the, the app show. And then, we've got the content that comes in and it, that gets downloaded every time that probably uh, you want it to get downloaded. And the impact of, on performance is that 2.2 uh, seconds of download time plus 50% download conversion. This is from Mozilla. 60%, it's 60% faster and 14% um, donation conversion. Wow, okay, it, it got uh, the Obama campaign 60% faster and four, four, more than 14% donation conversion. Uh, it's half load time plus 15% revenue and etc. Now, uh, when people look at appli mobile applications, they look at response time, uh, they look at animation, they look at idle time, they look at loading speed and, and stuff like that. So, for example, if you can see that text in blue, it's most likely that many of you guys won't even bother to read it, right? So, when we create applications, we normally want to focus on the user. The end goal is to make your site perform as fast on any specific design device, so it's, it's to ultimately, it's not to make it fast, but it's to ultimately make your users happy. So the end goal is to have a user that is excited about an application, about your website, about your web system, about your, your, your everything. And uh, you need to respond to users immediately. An application needs to respond to users immediately and acknowledge user input, possibly in under 100 microseconds. And probably render each frame in under 16 uh, milliseconds and aim for consistency. Users notice junk. So if you have, you know, haphazardly placed widgets or input uh, tags or something like that, it, it really strains the users. They don't like that. And then we normally want to maximize the thread idle time and keep users engaged uh, and deliver interactive content in under a thousand milliseconds. Right, and in progressive web apps, we've got what we call a service worker. And uh, I understand that this service worker was uh, adopted from a, a Python component called a worker. Uh, research into that. So I'm, I'm, I'm still a newbie in Python, so some of these things I don't really know, I didn't really understand in detail, but yeah. So a service worker is, is it's a powerful component for a progressive web app. It's, it's coded in, uh, if, if you're using JavaScript, like I've learned progressive web apps in, it's, you write it in JavaScript, but you write it in any scripting language that you use, service worker. So it has a lot of power, and it's, it's the one that determines what content you want to be downloaded at what time, and how much can be stored in the local database, like you know those browser database, like IndexedDB, etc. So it's, it, it, may, it works only on an, a secure HTTPS or with, a, with an SSL certificate. And um, it re-engages the user. Within the release of push, with the release of push notifications and notification web APIs, the user can receive push notifications even when the web app JS is closed. So that means that uh, normally an application can send you, the normal native application sends you push notifications, right? When you get a WhatsApp message, you get a push notification that comes over the top and you can now easily open. Now, with web apps, you can do the same. I think most of you that uh, browse on Facebook realize that 
most recently you can uh, you can receive push notifications from where well, from Facebook on your browser right so for example that's one uh, web-based push notifications over there on someone's phone and then they click it it opens and <coughs> a case study uh, on, on Google Plus or the Google Plus app uh, te teaches us that Google Plus hit their goal of never downloading more than 60, kilo 60 kilobytes of HTML and 60 kilobytes of JavaScript and 60 kilobytes of CSS at any one time. So now uh, it's, it's, it's faster because uh, Google Plus is now faster because they're downloading less, lesser and lesser content every time. So they're no longer downloading too much uh, data. It's mainly less than 60 kilobytes, and with your phone that runs on 4G, it's nothing really. So uh, once we have what we what we need for progressive app apps, and by this we mean the service workers and the app shell, we enhance the the the, the app to a progressive web app. Now, a progressive web app uses modern web capabilities to deliver an app like user experience. They perform, they evolve from pages in browser tabs to immersive top level apps, leveraging the web's low friction. Progressive web apps have got uh, those following properties. They are responsive, they're progressive, they're safe, uh, they're discoverable, they're installable, re-engageable, they're linkable, they're app-like, the connectivity independent now because you can store stuff in your local uh, browser-based database and they're fresh. And uh, a service worker, the one that, that thing that I was talking about uh, is a client-side network proxy, but that's not the only trick it has up its sleeves. It can catch the app show, right? So it stores the app show in your phone. That means that each time you, you open the each time you open the, the the application, the progressive web app, the 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 application the app show is already stored in your phone, so it's considerably faster. And it's very fast to load. Uh, you can watch the video that shows how a comparison between a native app and uh, a progressive web app, the loading speed. You see? So what happens, the first one is a native app, and the second one is a progressive web app. So the nat this native app uh, just loaded its app show and tries to download stuff, and then and this one, it's, so when, when you switch on a progressive web app, it already has uh, the previously loaded content on. So like you saw it, I think, uh, somewhere here. So it already has this content on. It's yesterday's content, but this one doesn't keep the yesterday's content. So now you're refreshing, and then it brings today's content. So it, it, the Progressive Web App syncs in the background. Literally, it, it does all everything in the background. So you open it, and it does the, the, the downloading in the background. And we've got web API awareness. Like uh, now you can use geolocation on, on websites. You can use uh, fetch APIs. You can use index DB, web Bluetooth, uh, battery API accelerometer, and many more. Right. And a, a, funny statistic that, a funny statistic that I've discovered is that in a, every consumer, and to verify this, you can uh, visit that link, that shortened link. Uh, in every app, even every consumer app, every step you make the users take to access your application, to access your service, costs you 20% of the users. What do I mean? For example, uh, 800 users find your app, right, on the Play Store. And then you make them click install, you lose 20%, right? And then when you make them accept permissions, 20% drop. When you make them download the app, 20, another 20% 20 drops. And then uh, finally, 
20, uh, uh, if very few people will use the app, right? So you'd want something that, you know, uh, doesn't make you lose many users. Now with progressive app, web apps, 800 people find the application and they go straight to using it. Because you don't, it's just like, it's, it's a website technically, but it's a website that works as a mobile application. Right, it's, it, it behaves as a mobile application, so you don't have to install and accept permissions and do blah 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 blah. You just have to install it, and when you install it, it's you, you just have to use it. So uh, the world has solved a number of challenges uh, that na mo uh, mobile native mobile apps have. <coughs> For example. Installs are not an issue. Uh, there is no APK size restrictions, and it's always up to date. So, unlike mobile applications, you have to push uh, various upgrades of your application, and with this, you just have to write the code, update your website, and it's already done. So, and uh, they work everywhere, wherever there is JavaScript, and probably any other scripting language. And uh, they tend to be trusted more than native applications because I don't know why people do it, but they, they trust the web more than they do uh, native applications. So uh, this is the end of my presentations. Thank you. Uh, well, I'll accept questions. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, any questions? Okay, so I got a couple of questions, right? Uh, I saw the, I streamed the Google, the Google Chrome Summit, right? And they were mainly focusing on PWAs, right? Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask, like, uh, the service worker is mainly JavaScript, right? So is it like framework, de framework dependent, or you can actually, or you can actually use React in any other JavaScript framework. Yeah. So uh, the main reason why it 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 has to be JavaScript is that you want your app to be fast. So if you use frameworks and frameworks, it it makes it slow, but okay. it works okay. because it's still JavaScript. It's, okay. it's still code. It's still, it will work, but okay. it will be because you know. Uh, you don't want your, 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 your phone doing a lot of work on, on processing the JavaScript, you know, because those frameworks come with a lot of coding. So, but yeah, so many, many people prefer to have, you know, their own code and describing how the, the service worker behaves themselves, other than, first of all, getting jQuery and then coding some more on, on top of jQuery, but it still works. And the other question is on browser dependency, right? When I saw, the, when I streamed the summit, mm -hmm. may, maybe it's because it's Google, but they were mainly showing the PWA in Chrome, right? So I, I'm not sure whether, does it support other browsers? Is it, a, is it like a web standard? Or? Yeah, it's been supported by a lot of uh, browser companies. I know of the most popular, Mozilla and, and Opera, they do support it. Oh. Yeah. Actually, I think the guys from Firefox, it's, 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 it's still a bit of kind of a myth. We really, 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 really uh, studied it because it's, it's had some several contributions before it was called Progressive Web Apps. There had several contributions. Uh, many stuff has been brought in by many stuff, but uh, guys from Mozilla are one of the guys that actually really contributed a lot. And then the last question is on local storage, right? Uh -huh. So when you load in a page for the first time, it's cached, right? Yes, if you, yeah, if you, if you have, uh, firstly, yeah, it's, yeah, let's say it's, it's cached. Like yes. the page you've accessed is what? cached. The page you've accessed is cached. Yes. Then for like how long the, is it cached? Can you specify like the... In a progressive web app? Yeah. So mainly what we do is, um, in our service worker, 
we actually define uh, what you want to get cached, what you want to get stored. So what everything, so mainly the app show is normally what you want to, to get stored. So the app show is basically the, the, the framework uh, on of the application. So probably if it's a chat application or if it's what? Yeah, if it's a chat application, you'd want uh, probably that header and probably some of those cards that are inside and then get the content, uh, probably a few blocks of content cached so that you know you won't have uh, issues with the user waiting. Because a funny, a funny, I don't know if I put it in the slides, but a funny observation that was made by some of the guys that do researches is that many users prefer to have uh, yesterday's data instantly than to have yesterday to have to wait too long for today's data. So it's more like you open your Facebook application and ah, there's something wrong with this application. So that's why we stole some some content. So this is my first time hearing about progressive web apps. Are there any examples so that maybe I can take a look? Okay. Uh, the guys from, um, I think, is it Opera? Yeah. So if you have your phone or if you have any, anything to browse from, you can go on pwa.rocks. There are some, a number of progressive web apps that have been made there that show you how progressive web apps behave. And if you want uh, to have a short code lab, I think it's about less than an hour, a code lab that teaches you how to create your own progressive web app, it's on uh, the Google developers website. So you just say Google uh, developers code lab on progressive web app, just search something like that. It'll come out. So yeah, they actually teach you to make, and uh, it's a it's a chat application that you make in the code lab. Any more questions? Yes, uh, I don't know really about if it's data comp if we can call it data compression because uh, I'm not really the engineer on the guys that do it, that did the engineering. I'm more of the one of the guys that use the technology, you know. So I'm actually turning some of the some of my uh, works currently into useful progressive web apps. But um, in my experience, I've seen that uh, the work really they, they, they minimize the, the usage of data. It's very much possible. Like I've, I've, I've shown you how uh, Google Plus downloads less than 60 kilobytes of, of data uh, at any one time. So it's, well, it's something that's significantly uh, good in terms of data, downloading a lot of data. So. Um, explaining that technically, explaining the mechanisms, uh, I can't really uh, say how it does that, but I know how it works. So it, uh, it, you can catch stuff and you, because unlike progress, unlike uh, native web apps, native web apps, to, to minimize the, the, the downloading of data, you need to write some, 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 some real code. You know, yeah, you really have to be, very good, but now with, with this one, it's just uh, you, you determine what content you want to be downloaded by your users. So it gives you that liberty to say, right, um, you know, for, to minimize this content. I think Washington Post, if uh, some of the, if you know Washington, Washington Post, those guys that publish news, they're some of uh, the early adopters of progressive web apps. So they, they, they've minimized, you know, they, they are saying that it's, 
it's, uh, it gives, uh, it, it downloads little data as compared to native web, native web apps. Yeah. Any more questions? And uh, I think Petras, your talk involves something about um, using uh, the old style phones for something similar to like what is just asked. So, if you want to hear more, I think you should attend uh, Petra's talk. So, very interesting. Um, thanks, uh, Andrew, for your talk. Oh, you can make us a question.